the hits. Hey, this particular episode is going to be a good one. I'm starting on a new series, the A6400 versus the A7 III. Now, the A6400 has the same sensor size as the A6300, as the A6000, as the A6100, and the A6500. So pretty much all of it's going to apply. So if you have any one of those cameras, this is the video for you. Now, the A6400 has the APS-C sensor versus the Sony A7 III, which has a full frame sensor. Now, what is APS-C? What does that even mean after this? If you've been around this channel any length of time, you know this channel is all about iron sharpening iron and we all taking our skill to the next level. I'm Aaron Jones, I'm your big brother, and I got your back. And if you have not already, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the little bell because I don't want you guys to miss anything that may be able to help you. So with that being said, we're talking about the A6400, the APS-C sensor versus the uh, A7 III, which has a full frame. So, like I said before, what does the APS-C mean? So what I did was I took some notes, and so I wanted to make sure that we all was on the same page, and I found some great posts, and some great information, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this logistics out of the way, so we can get right to the meat of this video, the difference between crop and full frame. According to Wikipedia, of course, APS-C really means Advanced Photo System Type C is the image sensor format approximately equivalent to the size of advanced photo system film negative in the C or classic format, which is 25.1 by 16.7 millimeters with an aspect ratio of three to two. So we already know that the A6400 the has the 6K sensor with a three to two ratio and down samples to 4K, which the A7 III does the same as well. So. With that being said, it is therefore also equivalent in size to the Super 35 uh, motion picture film format, which has the dimensions of 24.89 millimeters by 18.66 millimeters. So basically the Super 35 is the sensor size that most movies are shot with. So that is the pretty much equivalent of the A6400 sensor size. So one of the things I wanna get right out of the way right now is that I don't think there's a better sensor saying that the APS-C is better than the full frame or the full frame is better than the APS-C. I think there's different tools for the job. And so based on how you like to shoot and what your workflow looks like, that's the one you normally will pick. So, so let's get into the advantages of having the full frame. Advantages with the full frame, sensor size, it takes in more light because it's larger. It's a larger space to gather in more light. So that means you won't need higher ISOs as opposed to the APS-C sensor size. So you get a higher ISO performance with a larger sensor size. And you have more control over the depth of field with the full frame sensor. And you're gonna have a more improved dynamic range with the sensor size because it takes in more information. So it's gonna have more tonal uh, information being taken in on the sensor. And one of the things that I have found is that um, the smaller sensor size has more issues with moray, it has more issues with uh, shutter um, jello effects. The bigger sensor sizes don't have the same issues. So I just want to throw that out there. The disadvantages of the full frame, one is expense. It costs more to have a full frame. And two, the, the size and weight of the camera that a full frame is in, it's gonna be a bigger camera than one uh, normally, especially these hybrid cameras. Um, when we're talking about A6400 versus the A7 III, the A6400 obviously is gonna be a smaller camera. Well, full frame, people think that it's a great thing not having a crop factor, but I think both sides of the coin are equal. Because of the full frame not having a crop factor, you not being able to punch in as much as you would with a 1.5 crop, which is on the A6400. Now, the A6400 has that 1.5 crop, so for instance, if I had a 50 millimeter lens on my A6400, it's really gonna be a focal length of 75 millimeters. So that is a plus to me. Now it's kind of relative in somebody else's eyes, they might see it as a negative. But for me, I'm looking at the tool to do the job. So if I can use the APS-C sensor and I can get that 75 millimeter range with a 50 millimeter lens, I'm all for it. Plus with the 
uh, clear image zoom on the A6400, I think it's a win-win. Now, with the full frame also, if you're a photographer or whatever, you're gonna have slower uh, frame rates because it has to take time to process all the information that's being taken in on the large sensor size. So then there's that. But for me, I prefer them both. I think they both have a job and I think the right tool for the right job, um, depending on what you need done. So I'm all for both of them and I own them both, so hey. Now, the A6400 the A has a sensor size of 23.5 millimeters by 15.6 millimeters. It's only slightly smaller than a super 35 millimeter, which is, like I said before, that is the size sensor that most movies are shot on. So let's talk a little bit more about what does full frame mean? What, what do we mean when we say full frame? Again, let me go to my notes. The full frame camera uses a sensor that has the same size as a single frame of traditional 35 millimeter film measuring 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters. So basically that's where that all came from is back when traditionally when they used to actually use the film, each frame was 36 by 24 millimeters. And so that is a full frame size. And so that's what they're looking at and everything else is benchmarked based on that full frame size. So now when we have our A6400, which is a crop of that uh, full frame size, well then it's just telling you that it's not going to get as much of a wider field of view as the full frame. But again, like I said, there's advantages to that. So let's look at how that transcribes into video or photo. So basically what I want to show you is the field of view. It is how much is being captured in a frame size. Now a full frame sensor is gonna capture more uh, of a field of view than a crop sensor size. And so I went out and I shot this to show you the difference between the cropped 1.5 crop and the full frame. So I shot both of these with an 85 millimeter lens so for the full frame, as you can see, I'm getting way more uh, field of view than I would get with the, the 1.5 crop. So with the 85 millimeter on the 1.5 crop on the A6400 or the A6300 or the A6100, A6000, A6500, it doesn't matter because they have the same sensor size, the 1.5 crop. So with the same 85 millimeter lens, I'm getting 127.5 millimeters, a range, a focal length. That's why the field of view is more narrow. So basically, if I put the same 127.5 millimeter lens on the full frame, it's gonna look the same as the 85 millimeter lens on the APS-C. So basically everything is benchmarked based on full frame. So everything's, that's why they say 35 millimeter equivalent. So the 35 millimeter equivalent is the benchmark for all, pretty much all sensor sizes. So basically what I wanted to make sure you guys understood, we was all on the same page. When they talk about crop, it's all about how much of a crop that it is. And like I said, the A6400 and all the other A6 series basically have the same sensor size and they're pretty much all 1.5 crop. So basically it's 1.5 times the 50, 50 millimeter lens. So that would be 75 millimeters, if that makes sense to you. So that is a great thing. But I also love, and I can't not mention this, with the full frame Sony a7 III, I can hit a button and I can punch in the Super 35 mode. I can punch in to 1.5 crop. So yes, I'm filming this particular episode with the Zeiss Batiste uh, 25 millimeter F2 lens, and I'm shooting it in Super 35 mode. So I'm shooting on the A7 III. So again, like I said, it's all about using the tool that you want to use. And based on the lights that I got here, that Super 35 mode was best for me in trying to get the field of view that I wanted you guys to be able to see. And so that's why I use that. So I want to make sure that you guys are subscribing to the channel because I got a lot of content coming at you and I don't want you guys to miss something that may end up helping you. So make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell. I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm trying to get to a thousand because when I get to a thousand, then I'll be able to put in other kind of posts 
not just videos. I can update the channel with all kind of good information that hopefully they may be something new to you, might help you, might inspire you hopefully, and encourage you to do more to take your skill level a little higher because that's what I'm searching for for myself. So like I said, I'm Aaron Jones, I'm your big brother, I got your back. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell, and make sure you go out and you film something and kill it.